If there's one thing proponents of war will tell you, even as they try to convince you that the very last thing they would ever want is war, even as they remain safe and make sure others die in their war, even as they buy stock in the companies that get rich off war, it is that there is always a good reason to go to war. Absolutely. Always. Every time. We have fallen for some of the dumbest lies warmongers have drummed up and have fought for the dumbest reasons you can imagine. Worse still, we have shouted these reasons as slogans, as if to justify the stupid, wasteful sport that is war. On the 15th of February, 1898, the battleship Maine was rocked by an explosion in Havana Harbor. The lie quickly spread that this was the doing of a Spanish mine, helping launch the United States into war against Spain with the rallying cry, Remember the Maine? To hell with Spain! Of course, none of the five inquiries into her wreckage, not in 1898, or again in 1898, or in 1911, or in 1974, or in 1998, could conclude that a mine brought down the main, and as it turned out, most concluded the explosion came from inside the ship. And still, we went to war. There were plenty of slogans in World War I. They needed all they could get. Was the entire world caught in bloody turmoil over the assassination of an archduke in Sarajevo? No. They just had a lot of guns and bullets and shells, and somebody needed to use them. And hell, no one had any better plans for the psalm anyway. One of the least known slogans for the war probably summed it up best. Penned by Randolph Bourne, it idealizes, War is the health of the state. What better way to sum up complete insanity but with an insane statement. In 1964, we believed that one U.S. aircraft carrier and one U.S. destroyer and four U.S. fighter bombers were somehow endangered by three small Vietnamese torpedo boats. We wiped out the Vietnamese, found that we liked the taste of it, and called it the Gulf of Tonkin Incident. Lyndon Johnson used this story, you know, that we were so threatened by the folks we massacred, to get us into the Vietnamese War. War drums were always being battered during the 20th century. When I was a boy in the 1970s, our class was shown a Cold War surplus film made in the early 1960s called Red, Red, Nightmare. Red, Nightmare. Red Nightmare. The plot was as simple as it was stupid. Jerry wakes up one morning to find that the Reds had taken over. Evil and speedy those Reds were. All of his rights are taken away, and the world he knew has become a nightmare. My balls might not have dropped yet, but my bullshit detector was on full alert. With lies like that, it's no wonder so many of us grew up to become cynics. And yet, somehow we still fell for the dumbest lies of all time. After the tragic events of September 11, 2001, it was shocking how many of us fell into lockstep behind the second President Bush's call for war against a nation that had no involvement in the tragedy. Weapons of mass destruction, the administration shouted long and hard, and surprisingly, so many of us fell for it. I remember watching Secretary of State Colin Powell presenting the most obvious lies before the United Nations. You see those buildings that look like trailers? Well, they're bombs. Bombs, I tell you. You can see they're bombs because they're Iraqi. That's all you need to know. He might as well have been that obvious the way people bought it. Of course, they were all proven to be lies by and by, and by that time thousands upon thousands of Iraqis were dead. By the end of the war, a nebulous term if there ever was one, 
Hundreds of thousands of Iraqis were counted dead, with millions more maimed, scarred, and wounded. And for what? Turns out, it didn't even matter. The United States has sent its fighting men into harm's way for any reason they can think of. As an example, I'm going to list just a few of the times in the 20th century the United States sent its armed forces to another country. This is just an example and not even a complete list. Colombia, Panama, 1901. Colombia, 1902. Honduras, 1903. Dominican Republic, 1903. Syria, 1903. Ethiopia, 1903. Panama, 1903. Dominican Republic, 1904. Morocco, 1904. Panama, 1904. Korea, 1904 to 1905. Cuba, 1906 to 1909. Honduras, 1907. Nicaragua, 1910. Honduras, 1911. China, 1911. Honduras, 1912. Panama, 1912. Cuba, 1912. China, 1912 to 1941. Turkey, 1912. Nicaragua, 1912 to 1925. Mexico, 1913. Haiti, 1914. Dominican Republic, 1914. Mexico, 1914 to 1917. Haiti, 1915 to 1934. China, 1916. Dominican Republic, 1916 to 1924. China, 1917. World War I, 1917 to 1918. Cuba, 1917 to 1922. Mexico, 1918 to 1919. Panama, 1918 to 1920. Soviet Union, 1918 to 1920. Croatia, 1919. Turkey, 1919. Honduras, 1919. China, 1919. Guatemala, 1919. Soviet Union, 1920 to 1922. Panama, 1921. Costa Rica, 1921. Turkey, 1922. China, 1922 to 1923. Honduras, 1924. China, 1924. China, 1925. Honduras, 1925. Panama, 1925. Nicaragua, 1926 to 1933. China, 1926. China, 1927. China, 1930. United States. Yes, the United States. This happened when President Hoover called the 3rd Cavalry and the 12th Infantry Regiments against the Bonus Army, veterans of World War I who had not been paid. 1932. Cuba, 1933. China, 1934. Newfoundland, 1940. Bermuda, 1940. St. Lucia, 1940. Bahamas, 1940. Jamaica, 1940. Antigua, 1940. Trinidad. 1940. British Guiana, 1940. Greenland, 1941. Netherlands, 1941. Iceland, 1941. World War II, 1941 to 1945. China, 1945. Germany, 1945 to 1949. Austria, 1945 to 1955. Italy, 1945 to 1946. Japan, 1945 to 1952. Philippines, 1944 to 1946. China, 1945 to 1947. Korea, 1945 to 1947. Italy, 1946. Greece, 1947. Palestine, 1948. Germany, 1948. China, 1948 to 1949. Korean War, 1950 to 1953. Taiwan, 1950 to 1955. China, 1954 to 1955. Vietnam, 1955 to 1975. Egypt, 1956. Lebanon, 1958. Haiti, 1959. Thailand, 1962. Cuba, 1962. Laos, 1962 to 1975. Zaire, 1964. Dominican Republic, 1965. Israel, 1967. Zaire, 1967. Cambodia, 1968. Cambodia, 1970. Cyprus, 1974. Cambodia, 1975. Lebanon, 1976. Korea, 1976. Zaire, 1979. Iran, 1980. El Salvador, 1980. Sinai, 1980. El Salvador, 1981. Libya, 1981. Sinai, 1982. Lebanon, 1982 to 1983. Egypt, 1983. Grenada, 1983. Honduras, 1983 to 1989. Chad, 1983. Persian Gulf, 1984. Italy, 1985. Libya, 1986. Haiti, 1986. Bolivia, 1986. Persian Gulf, 1987 to 1988. Honduras, 1988. Panama, 1988. Libya, 1989. Panama, 1989 to 1990. Colombia, 1989. Philippines, 1989. Liberia, 1990. Saudi Arabia, 1990. Kuwait, 1991. Iraq, 1991 to 2012. Zaire, 1991. Sierra Leone, 1992. Bosnia, 1992 to 1996. Herzegovina, 1992 to 1996. Kuwait, 1992. Somalia, 1992 to 1995. Bosnia, 1993 to 1995. Macedonia, 1993. Haiti, 1994 to 1995. Macedonia, 1994. Liberia, 
1996. Central African Republic, 1996. Bosnia, 1996. Albania, 1997. Sierra Leone, 1997. Cambodia, 1997. Guinea Bissau, 1998. Kenya, 1998 to 1999. Tanzania, 1998 to 1999. Afghanistan, 1998. Sudan, 1998. Liberia, 1998. East Timor, 1999 to 2000. Serbia, 1999. As I say, this was only a partial list. A complete list would fill a whole other book, one that I highly recommend someone write. This list includes more than 150 wars, raids, assaults, battles, and the like. More than one for every year of the century. Even if you scoffed at such numbers and claimed it could only be half of that, you would still end up with more than 70. We all know there are too many wars, and yet we keep on starting them. Even in the 21st century, sitting comfortably in 2016, I can tell you about more than 20 instances of U.S. military actions in such places as Sierra Leone, Yemen, East Timor, Afghanistan, the Philippines, Côte d'Ivoire, Iraq, of course, Liberia, Georgia, Djibouti, Haiti, Pakistan, Lebanon, Somalia, Libya, Nigeria, Jordan, Turkey, Chad, Mali, Cameroon, Syria, and Uganda. In just about every instance, I'm sure you can find someone to provide you with an excuse or lie to make you feel better about why we were there. But I can promise you, it has nothing to do with ethics. War is what happens when you have excised any attempt at being fair and fulfilling. War is what happens when you throw away ethics.